Hey guys, I'm Major Far here. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. This is the part two of my two part video about basics of Photoshop Lightroom for beginners. If you haven't watched the first one yet, uh, I'm gonna link it down below or you can find it in the pop up banner in the corner. Uh, go watch that first, then come back. I'm gonna pause it right now. Did you watch it? Yes? Let's get on with this video. Hit import, and it takes you to this. Uh, that library is just for preview, and if you want to edit a photo, you have to go to uh, this option, develop. Go under basics, uh, you can have it as a color, or you can have a black and white, and that's pretty much it for all the tools uh, Lightroom give you as of editing a photo. So in this little box up here, which is like more of a like a toolbar, modification toolbar, you can either crop a photo uh, by clicking in this. Uh, you can do a free transform if you want to do a free transform, but it will reduce your pixels. It will reduce the quality of your photo. Just have that in mind before doing this. So I always have it locked and I'm, I make sure that the ratio and the aspect ratio stays the same when I change it unless I would like to change the aspect ratio to something that I'm using. For example, if I want to print out a 5x7 photo, I change the aspect ratio to 5x7 as the Lightroom has a preset. Or if I'm cropping a photo for Instagram, I just go 4x5. For example, in this case, I go 4x5 and I uh, use the maximum amount of crop that I have to change it to that. And uh, that's how I'm actually going to post this photo. Uh, you can you can move it around with this and then here you can change the angle so it's different than the rotation it's just like barely rotating it to uh, have a actual flat horizontal run I still see the grain here let me just go back and uh, get this grains out of this photo effects and grains double click to make it zero again all right then you have the spot removal, as I said, it works okay, not as good as uh, Photoshop. So, just teach you some of the hotkeys, you can uh, zoom with Z, and then when you click on space, you can actually use the pan to move it. So let's, for example, remove this. So you have two options, you can clone it or you can heal it. So when you clone, you actually brush on top of what you want to a remove and it clones from your second spot for example here this looks the best but when you clone since it's taking everything from the second spot there's always that it looks a little bit uh, fake but when you do a heal you can actually change it here it uses your uh, second spot it takes the information but it also fetters it out so it doesn't look as fake and as edgy as uh, the clone looks. However, I always take my uh, photos to Photoshop uh, to remove the spot I needed. We can't use the red eye correction here because uh, there's no red eye and the car is a Hellcat, it's not a red eye. Uh, these three tools are the best tools that are in Lightroom. Uh, let's start with, with the brush. So, for example, if you want to just brighten up this part and don't touch anything else, you can basically brush over uh, the front bumper, for example, and um, change the brightness to it. Uh, how we can change the size of the brush is this here, or with your scroller, you can just like uh, scroll up and down to make it bigger and smaller. Uh, there's a feather and there is a flow. Oh, this is new and density. That's new. I didn't see that before. So, if you get the feather more, it's like it will, it will give it a feather around it. So the middle be denser with your brush and it feathers it out. So, for example, now I'm gonna have the feather here and then 
I want, I, I want to have it all the way 100, 100, so it's the perfect amount. So I brush here, just eyeball it. And you can see what you brushed by uh, hovering over here, by going over here to show select the mask, and this is how your brush looks. If you change your feather, for example, and then you do it again, if you see it looks different than what you have. You have to go over it again and again to for it to look like that. Let's just go back and then let's do it again. See now the feather is different. So I always like to have the feather right here. So let's brush over this again. Just eyeball it. You can show selected mask with clicking this or clicking at O, which is overlay mask. So let's remove the mask. These three tools here, the brush, the radio filter, and the graduated filter, you can apply these filters and change the basic settings. Let's say I'd like to make it brighter and bring some more shadows to it. As you see, I'll give it more shadows, but you can see it looks a little fake down here because I just brushed over it. So let's say I would like to remove that. There's a erase option down here, or if you uh, hold your Alt key, can actually remove those spots that is looking not good. Again, go hit O or soft overlay, show selected mask, and you can remove the places that you don't want it to actually affect. Let's say that's good. Remove that. Let's do just a little more. Let's just do it here. Perfect. That doesn't look fake. And you can compare it, compare this photo with the original photo by hovering over here. Our cycles between those two, you can see the before and after. Or we can, if you double start, keep clicking on this, it gives you different options. Or you can click on your backslash, and that will give you a before and after right away. And then if you want to access your uh, brush again, you can just Go to the brush option and you see this little white dot here you can select it you can right click to delete it or you can just like click delete on your keyboard or if you want to duplicate it you can duplicate it here or if you want to redo everything you reset your brush so that was it for the brush uh, let's do the next one which is the uh, radio filter radio filter is a great tool to work with so when you hover over the radio filter and click on it, or shift them as it says here, uh, you can, for example, click here and make a radio a selection or radio shape, either oval shape or a circular shape. When you release it, that open that actually gets unlocked and you can change things. Uh, there's two options to the radio filter. You can either have it how it is now for outside be your mask to inside and nothing inside or you could go down here and invert it to just be outside inside to outside so either outside to inside or inside to outside in this case let's do let's say i would like to darken everything else but the car so i can adjust my filter like this and then let's hit O so I don't see these red things and let's bring down the exposure for the outside so if you see let's do back backslash again before and after everything outside is being dark darkened and also let's bring up the shadows all the way out let's just go all the way out and try this again this the shadows came out like that. Let's say we want to invert this and let me just bring down the exposure so now we have the shadows blown out in just this little area before and after. It actually looks really good. I never blowed out my uh, shadows like that but that doesn't look that bad. Maybe I should start doing this but no. Uh, there are a couple options here with brushes. Uh, I'll go over these uh, in the other video that I'm posting later on. And also the colors. Uh, you can change the feather here. 
you can make it all the way or make it like this uh, it all depends on how you like your filter to look like uh, let's just delete this one and go over the last one which is your graduated filter graduate filter is great uh, sometimes you have a overexposed sky you want to get rid of or if you want to actually bring those textures up from the ground you just use a, a graduated filter uh, they are kind of like underrated this filter is underrated it's perfect to use so let's say I want to bring down the highlights or exposure on the sky so I just click on the photo and drag it and these two lines shows how much uh, feather you want it to have in the previous filters you could actually adjust the feathers but in this uh, the distance between the middle line and the two side lines is actually uh, distinguishing your feather so let's hit O again and you can see here that how it's gonna look if you make this a little wider so let's make this all the way straight because this dot here and this line is actually your baseline so let's put this here for example hit O again or remove that uh, show selected mask and as I said I want to bring down the exposure just a bit and the highlights and give it just a little bit of clarity and that's how it looks that's how you can actually uh, change the setting on one part of the photo while you don't want to do the same thing on the other part of the photo you can do this with the other tools too but graduated filters you can actually work with them a little bit more freely and just for the sake of it let me uh, do the same thing for the foreground I would like to bring the details more out of my uh, pavement here so I want it to look a little bit brighter and I want it to give it some more texture so it looks a little better and then just a little bit of clarity and that's pretty much it before and after you can see the difference uh, let's, let me just rotate this photo just a little bit more and I would like to give it some more exposure and some more shadows just a little clarity and that looks good to me and these are the basics of editing the photo this photo is actually pretty good and presentable for for example Instagram um, considering how basic I use these tools uh, Lightroom gives you a variety of tools to work with I can't actually wait to go over them in the next video with you guys now that you have edited the photo you can either export it and be done with it exit out and be like that's it I'm done drop the mic or you can actually edit more photos so if you go to the next photo for example this one and you kind of want to bring all the edits that you just did since you just moved one photo from the previous photo you can actually carry all the settings and adjustment you did by hitting previous right here you click on this it gives you all the settings and adjustment you just did uh, all you need to do is just like change the crop maybe because the framing has changed and that's pretty much it wow you have you have another editor photo just by using the same adjustment that you did before you might want to actually go ahead and like change just a bit but everything all the adjustment and edit is going to be the same because you don't want to have uh, one photo overexposed or one photo underexposed uh, for your clients when you uh, send it to them you just want to have everything kind of looking the same uh, same thing with other photos when you go over them these actually these photos actually came really good uh, for example this one because I was just looking at the edited photo and I came to this one I can hit the previews and it's it's gonna edit like that but just for the sake of it let me adjust this perfect and copy everything and go to this one and just instead of going to previews and just paste them it gives you the same thing it gives you all the adjustments and edits that you just made to this photo actually look at this photo wow just like that you just edited your first photos now you want to post it on Instagram or present it to your friends if you don't want to actually take your laptop or your desktop to places right you just you want to export these photos and uh, show them on either on your phone or however you like to present your photos uh, as I said we have to export the photo you can either uh, select the photos you just edited 
all of them but click on sh uh, control for example this photo and or this one so you have two selected you can right click on them export or you can just do one photo at a time so in this case let's just export this photo so you can you, you can right click go to export and export so this window will pop up there are some presets by Lightroom here uh, that you can use if you want to like email them or uh, burn full size JPEG you can use these presets but let's just go through what these mean first thing first you want to have export to email hard drive DVD I export them to my hard drive either my desktop or the hard drive that I'm using on the side so export location you can either export it to the same uh, folder as the original photo or a specific folder or uh, anywhere else you want then you can either put it in soft folder because when you edit the photos uh, they usually get saved as the same name that you have the photos if you don't put it on the sub folder uh, it will ask you to for example remove the original photo and you don't want to do that so put it in the sub folder um, you name the sub folder here uh, add this to the catalog uh, you can do that or not when you add uh, the edited photos to the catalog you actually just uh, adding more and more to your catalog it will actually uh, be a store for Lightroom to open up so I, I always like leave that off I don't use it uh, every now and then I optimize my catalog and basically whenever you have all these photos edited they usually stay in the Lightroom for you to go back and look at but when you uh, change your computer or change uh, your system and you take your hard drive with you if you create a catalog and you import that catalog in the other Lightroom you can use the same edited photos but for the sake of this video we leave it off you can change the naming here if you want and then uh, you can preview some videos as I said uh, format and quality you can't really edit videos here it's just for the sake of changing the quality and changing the format of the video uh, file setting is the most important one when you get the Lightroom it's always on 80% or 70% if I'm not wrong you always want to have this 100% and you always want to have a JPEG if you're getting J J if you're exporting in JPEG and do not mess around with this color space at all because if you change this make it like Adobe RGB or anything uh, most devices are not being able to read those colors and when you give it to people and you, and you give it to your client the colors are just useless and they will get mad at you just trust me image sizing is when you want to print something or resize something we leave it off output uh, sharpening you don't really want to sharpen it extra if you haven't changed anything on the settings metadata is uh, for photo to be exported with the data that you have saved on your camera and then watermarking uh, you can you can change your watermark when you go to your water edit watermark for example I have my own watermark set up or sometimes you can just add a new one uh, I will go over these in the next video for the intermediate one but uh, you can you can have your name as a watermark on the corner as you if you want have my own MA watermark and post processing you can either open it up show it in for, uh, explorer if you want to do it or as I have it here do nothing so this is looking good to me I just hit export and it's just working here and that's how you export a photo again if you go to another photo as I said there's like two ways to export it just select everything that you just edited and export or one by one so when you go to the next photo for example this photo right here that I edited at the beginning these are some good photos so I can't wait to actually go over them so not this one but this one you can right click and instead of going through all the settings again you just export with the previous setting you just export with the previous setting you click on that and it just export it in the background for you and you can go ahead and like keep on editing more photos 
There are a couple more slides here like map, book, slideshow, print and web. If you have a GPS based uh, camera, you can have the photos being shown on the map. If you take photos with your phone, it shows it on the map. The books are like some presets that uh, Lightroom has for itself. Uh, you can make uh, photo books and things like that. You see here, page has been limited. And then uh, slideshows. If you need to make a slideshow, Lightroom has that option too. Or if you want to print something, you can use uh, Lightroom to uh, get your template set up and uh, get ready for print. And the web is basically if you want to create a website, you can use Lightroom to do that. Anyway, uh, all I have done with Lightroom these past couple years was just hovering between library and develop because everything else is there for you to uh, work with, but they're not perfected and they're not actually in an advanced version. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's the basics of Lightroom. If you have any questions, make sure to comment down below or reach me out on Instagram. I'll link my Instagram uh, profile below. Uh, hopefully this helps you to uh, have a head start in uh, working with Lightroom. It's a great software. I've been using Lightroom for at least the past uh, five years. And you will love this software if you're just starting out uh, editing photos. It's perfect to just edit photos on the go. But if you need some extra editing, for example, removing a subject or removing a person, and that goes in the actual uh, Photoshop CS. But for just the sake of editing photos, Lightroom is a great tool. Uh, explore it, get into it, work with it more, and you will enjoy and you will love this uh, software. That's it for me today, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button, man. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Turn notification bells on, and I don't want you guys to miss any of his videos coming out. With that being said, I'm just gonna go and see you guys in the next one. Peace.